Hello there, students. Once again, it's Mr. Brzezinski, a.k.a. the Steven Spielberg of technology, and I'm going to talk you through a lesson in how to create an animated movie. So I'm excited about this. Let's first go ahead. I see you already found the video, so let's take this tab that the video is currently in, drag that out of the window, create a new window, resize it in the lower right-hand side of your screen, get that off to the side so I can see what's going on in the video and work on my project at the same time. Let's come back over to the stream and I'm going to open up the animation project. I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom where it says add my work. I'm going to select add and I'm going to select slides. Go ahead and select slides and it will create a file for me. I can open up the file once again, I probably want to click and drag this out as well. Pop! Pulled it right out. I can resize this window, fit it on, get it all nice and cozy, because we're going to go for a ride. I got my presentation project open, and it's saying I need to click to add a title. Forget about all that. I don't want that type of stuff. What I want to do is go up to the layouts, and I'm going to click on layouts, and I'm going to choose the blank layout, because... I don't want anything on my screen here. I want to add a background. So I come back up here. I'm going to add a nice background. I'm going to choose an image to put on my slide. Once the choose image dialog box open, I'm going to hit search. And now it's time to start thinking. What is my project going to be about? What is my movie going to be about? What are the characters going to look like? How are they going to interact? What's going to happen? What's going to take place? So give it some thought now. Do I want it to be sports? Do I want it to be uh, about insects? Do I want it to be about space travel? Do I want it to be about aliens? Do I want it to be about uh, dragons and night slaying and all sorts of craziness? So, you know, a beach scene, a, a sports theme, I don't know. You come up with it. You be creative and stop now and think. What am I going to do? So pause the video, and when you thought all the through with us, and you have good ideas, then come back to the video and pay attention. So now you have an idea about what you want to do your project on. I'm going to talk you through how I'm going to do my project, and then you are going to apply what you see to your background, to your animated characters, to what you are doing. So you do not have to do the same searches that I do. But again, I'm in the background image. I'm inserting a background image. And uh, my first topic will be, I'll make a little skating, a little skater. So I will look for a skate park. So I type in skate park, and I hit return, and it gives me some options here. So I find a skate park that's uh, pretty empty because I'm going to add the characters to. So whatever you pick, if you pick like a baseball field or, or a beach or whatever, you probably don't want a lot of humans running through your picture like this, but yet you want a blank background so that when you apply things to it, it'll look like they belong. So I'm going to choose this background for a skate park. When I'm done, obviously hit done and you could see that the skate park background has fit into the background of my slide. Now it's time to choose a character that is going to take action in my background here that's going to take action on my presentation or my animation movie. To do this I'm going to choose image. I can choose an image from the search and I think it just works better if it is a piece of clip art. So I'm going to look for something. I'll just type in skater right here. And uh, obviously you get a bunch of photographs, but these aren't going to be good for me. I'd much rather have a piece of clip art that I can move freely along the slide. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to look for a skater that might fit into my presentation nicely. And I think I found one right here. This person looks unsteady, a little bit humorous. I'm going to double click on this woman right here and put her into my presentation. Obviously she is too large so I will resize her immediately 
by clicking on the corner handle. I don't want to flatten her or uh, pinch her, or make her too skinny by clicking on the side. I want to use the corner handle and that will uh, resize her proportionately to her original size by using the corners, the corner handles. Okay, so I'm going to put her on the ground now. So I put her on the ground close to the bottom of the, the slide here, and that gives the perspective that she is close. As she skates back and she starts going up these jumps and stuff, I'm going to make her smaller to give the, the, a three-dimensional feel to this background so that she'll be skating away from the action. I can really start my character at any place on the slide, it doesn't matter, and I might even have her come off as, as she enters into the slide, okay? So you could also do that so that when the presentation actually starts, all you're going to see is her, her left skate here, okay? So I'll start her right there, and she'll come skating into my slide. That's slide number one, as you can see. Now we learned this in previous projects where we can select the slide and simply duplicate it by holding down the command button and pressing the letter D. And that will duplicate the exact same slide. And now I'm able to move her slightly. Okay, the, the less I move her, the more fluid the motion will be when the presentation or the movie starts. So I move her slightly right there. I go back up. I duplicate another slide. I come down. I move her a little bit more, and the faster she goes, the more I move her, and the slower she goes, the less I move as well. So I'm going to click here and duplicate again, come back out, and move her a little bit more, and then click over here, duplicate. So you can see how this is going here. It's very quick and easy if this is all I'm doing, and I'm moving her along, and as she starts to go further away, I might size her ever so slightly. Okay, so then again, duplicating slides, moving her further into the background here, and making her get a little bit smaller as she goes. So you can do this with whatever characters you're using, whatever background you're using. If you have to show depth, you can move her back and forth. Otherwise, if they're going to stay at the same uh, place on the slide, you can just move them back and forth as you go through and you keep duplicating the slides. You can see how this will um, move here by clicking on slide number one, just pressing the down arrow. And as it goes through, you will see how the action takes place on your screen. So you can see how it's going to look by using the arrow keys on the keyboard. So I made a series of slides up until this point and now she's finally back into the back corner where she's going to go up this skating wall and do a trick. So as I bring her closer to the wall, I can start to rotate her by using this handle at the top here, this dot handle, and I can easily rotate her like this. And then again, clicking and creating a new slide, Command D, bringing her over moving her further up the wall, and the further up the wall she goes, the more she rotates. So that's how to rotate a picture in your presentation. You just click on this handle at the top here, click and drag, and you can just rotate her right around. Okay, so you've checked Google and you tried to insert an image, but you can't seem to find anything that works for your presentation. It just doesn't look right. So we can go to alternative sources on the internet. Uh, for this, I will go to Clipart. So I can't find anything on Google. I'm going to go to clipart.com. I have the link for it right here. I may also add more links as the uh, course goes on. Well, you never know what's going to happen here, but I can click on clipart.com and it opens up Clipart. On the side over here, you could see that I have a keywords search engine and I could search for different pictures. In this case, I'm going to look for a diver, someone who dives, not driver, diver, someone who's going to dive off a cliff here. So I did my search 
and I scrolled past page one, and I went to page two, you can see there's 57 pages up here. There's tons and tons of pieces of clip art on this website. I'm going to choose this piece of clip art right here. I click on them. Now, if I take this piece of clip art as is, and I drag it into my project, it will carry a white background around it. Very difficult to get rid of in Google. So if I'm on Google here and I'm going to have this diver jump off this waterfall, right? So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to click and drag this, and I'm going to pull it into my waterfall. So I'm clicking, I'm dragging, and I pull, and it brings in the full size image. But you see it has the white background. So I don't want this, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. This gets tricky. I'm going to hit control on the keyboard and click, or I can use the right click on the mouse. I'm going to right click on the item. It's going to tell me that uh, this is not acceptable to download. OK, fine. But now it allows me to save my image. OK, so the pop-up menu comes up. And if I have trouble doing this, I can always click on this and uh, open it up in a new tab. Or I could just scroll up like this and bring the picture up into the tab bar. So if you can see here, I drag it up into the tab bar, up the top, and it opens up the picture in a new tab. Then I can right click on it and save image as. It's going to go to my downloads folder, and if it's not in the downloads folder, you want to choose the downloads folder. So I'm going to open up the pull down here and look for downloads over here. I may have to go to the student account and then look for downloads. Oh, not documents, but downloads. And then I'm going to hit save. Using Google Chrome in the bottom right hand side, you will see the download has occurred in the bottom left hand side right here. So uh, I can just double click on it and it will open up that icon in preview. Once preview opens, this is where it gets tricky. This is the cool part right here. Preview has a selection window. And I can get rid of this white background by simply clicking here, going to Instant Alpha, okay, and I click and drag open. Okay, so I'm going to select all this white area. So I'm clicking and dragging it. And what it does is it selects the color that I clicked on. And the more I drag, the more colors it picks up. So I just want to click and drag just a little bit to get all that white area. All that white area is now selected, and I can hit Delete. It's going to ask me, do I want to duplicate as a PNG? Yes, I do. So select that as well. I get a new window open right here. I'm going to click and drag. Oh, let's go to the Instant Alpha once again by going to the drop down. Click on Instant Alpha. I click and drag open this white area. Hit Delete. I go in between the arms. Click and drag. Delete. So any of the white background area that I don't want, I can delete. Here's a way to get rid of this base. Okay, So I still have these black lines here. And if I select too much black line, it goes up into his foot. And then I get too much of, his, um, too much of the clip art. If I make a mistake, I can also hit Command-Z to undo. So if I do click on his foot and I delete some of his foot, I can hit Command-Z and it goes back there, okay? And I can hit Command-Z, 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 and go back a few notches if I make that mistake. I can also use the lasso. So I click on this, and I say, use the lasso selection. Now, if I go through here like this, and I cut around his foot, then I can lasso all of this area right here, okay? And it has to be tight right around his foot. But then otherwise, it could be loose. So then I go down and around and come back on the other side. And now I can hit delete. And it takes away all that extra area. So I could use the lasso to delete things. So I continue to select things that I want to delete until I get rid of all the extra. OK, so I could just lasso that, hit delete. And now the picture is complete. The, net, the last thing that I'm going to do is select the entire item. Okay, I could do a rectangular selection around the item like this. Or I can say Command-A. Command-A will select all. And then I can say Command-C to copy. Command-A to select all. 
and Command C to copy. Those are all things that I could find in the edit menu as well. Now I come back over to my waterfall and I'm ready to Command V to paste it into place and boom, there's my picture without any at all. So I go resize it and again I want to use the corners to resize it proportionately and now he can be atop of the waterfall and he's ready to jump into the water as you can see. So I place him up there, he can dance along each slide, duplicating slides along the way as he goes down, he could be doing forward flips, reverse flips, all that great stuff. So go ahead and play with that. That's how to get a picture off of a website and get rid of the white background. There's also a little feature that people like to call cropping. Okay, so here's how to crop an image. All I do is double click on the image. When I double click on it, it gives me a black border around it. And using these items right here, I can now cut to just the picture I want, just the parts of the picture that I want. This might come in handy if there are things in the background or other objects that come close to the uh, come close to the piece of clip art that I want, but they aren't attached to it. If it's attached to it, I have to lasso it out using preview. Otherwise, I can crop an image like that. Okay, so now it's just a selection of just that image.